This video is an introduction to the data grid in Stacker. The data grid is where you'll store all of your data for your app. It looks a little bit like a spreadsheet, and you'll fill it up with information that your users will need to access within your app. Importantly, only you and the other people building your app will ever see the data grid. Your users will see the beautifully designed app that we're going to build in a different session. Stacker lets you use a variety of data sources, such as Airtable, Google Sheets, loads of other ones as well. You can also use Stacker's built-in database tool, Stacker Tables. This video is going to focus on Stacker Tables, just to get a bit of a feel for how the data grid works, and in the next video we're going to show you how you can use Airtable and Google Sheets as well. To access the data grid, click on Manage Fields and Data here. You can click this plus icon to add a new table to our app. You'll see three options, add new table, import from CSV, and paste from spreadsheet. If you have your data ready to go, you're welcome to try one of the second two options. But for now, let's assume that we don't have any data and we're gonna be working with a blank table. We're gonna call this table companies, as it will be a list of the companies that we're working on projects with. And we're gonna make sure generate sample content isn't checked so we can start with a nice blank table. You'll see it creates three columns by default. These columns are actually called fields and can store a variety of data, including text, numbers, currency, attachments, and a few others that we'll explore. If you hover over the name of any field, you'll see this little arrow appear. If you click here, you can access the field settings. Here you can change the name of the field and the type of field. And you can also choose to delete fields if you want to. This is a table that's a list of companies that we're working with, so let's change the name by clicking here to company name. And we'll keep the field type as short text. You can also resize fields by dragging them as you would a spreadsheet. We'll leave the description field as it is for now but let's use the status field to understand our relationship with each company. You hover over the word status and click the little arrow. You can see that this is a single select field. This means that you and your users can only choose one of a predefined list of words or phrases to complete the field. Let's get rid of the existing options by clicking the little X next to them. And let's add in our own options that we could use to describe our relationship with each company. I'm going to do active, in discussions, and ended. But you can put in what you like here. Now we have our first three fields set up. Let's put in some dummy data to see how it looks. You'll notice with the status field, you can't type in it. You could only select one of the options you created. Now, let's add a new field. If you click on Add Field, let's call this one Number of Employees. And we'll choose the field type to be Number. Now let's add another field to decide whether or not they should receive a Christmas card from us. And this time we're going to use a checkbox field. This is a field that is either on or off. You can either check a box or leave it unchecked. And lastly, let's add an attachment field so we can store the company's logo. And let's add some more dummy data into this just so it's full. If you want to delete a record or multiple records, you can just select the checkbox here and press the delete key.
Lastly, you can access the settings for your table by clicking here. Here you can rename the table, delete it, or change the primary field, which is the first column here. Every table has to have a primary field. You'll notice that you can't delete it if you try to. Now, through the power of TV magic, I'm going to create a second table called Projects, so I can show you how you link two tables together. This is a really important concept to understand, that you can link together two tables. It means that Stacker will understand that they are somehow related to each other. So, for instance, you could take a company and link it to a specific project to say that that project is with that company, or if you had a list of people, you could link those people to a particular project and say that those people are currently working on it. It's a really powerful tool and it will become really useful later on, both when we're designing our app and when we're setting up permissions for our app. We create a linked field as we would any other field. We're going to create it on the project page and we're going to call it company link. And then we scroll down to find link to another record. Note that you could also link to multiple records if you wanted to, say if you had one project that was working with multiple companies. We're going to link this to our companies table. Now, you'll see this acts a bit like a single select, but the choices are the companies in the other table. I'm going to link the projects to a company each. And now, if I go over to the companies table, you can see that the projects have linked to a company here too. Now, if you close the data grid, you'll see that our app has already started to take shape with the data that we created. But before we start styling our app, our next video is going to show you how you can bring in external data sources to Stacker as well.